ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, X-Wing players, and anyone who is potentially interested in X-Wing. Welcome to our channel. My call sign is Bad Mando, and today we are going to be unboxing the Pride of Mandalore expansion pack, or reinforcement pack, as it says here on the package itself. Now, before we get into that, I would like to say thank you to our sponsor for this particular video, which is Order 66 and Bright Forge. Also, would like to go ahead and plug their uh, upcoming con, which is going to be the Rebel, Rebel Scum Con here in Allen, Texas, very close to Dallas. So if you are interested, it is June 27th through June the 30th. Check out their uh, tickets on sale, and we will go ahead and put the website in our video description. So, in which case, please check it out. They already have numerous... Uh, people that are going to be signing autographs over there. So you can check that out um, in June. Please make certain to get tickets because tickets will be going fast from what I understand regarding this particular uh, convention. So in which case, thank you so very much to Order 66 and Bright Forge. Today we're going to be looking at the Pride of Mandalore and you can see that we got a lot of different things going on here such as Fang fighter dials, small ship tokens, and all sorts of different things. New pilots for Rebel Fangs. Yep, you heard me. So we got Bodica, Dirk, Fenral, and a Rebel, and then two Clan Ren volunteers. We also have some uh, pilots coming in from the Galactic Empire, which is going to be Moff Gideon and the uh, ISB Jingoists. And then we also have uh, two Mandalor or two Mandalorian Royal Guards as well. Now, we're going to get a lot of the upgrade cards, and we'll be talking about those very soon. And in which case, let's see if there's anything else that we missed here. Uh, looks like we have the usual descriptions of different devices and objects. Looks like we got some cool art here as well. Uh, this is, I believe, where they started introducing the Blazer Bomb. And then they have new asteroids, new debris clouds, electro chaff cloud, concussion bombs, thermal detonators, you know, the fun stuff. So it is also talking about new rules with the Blaze. And we'll be reading that when we get to that particular thing. We also have uh, electro uh, chaff clouds and the fuse marker to pleat tokens and strain tokens. Now, most of us probably know everything about the uh, fuse marker, but we will be talking about the blaze and the chaff cloud here fairly soon. So now, in which case, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get into the unboxing. So we're going to go ahead and open up all these cards here. You see that we got Moff Gideon. Moff Gideon, if you don't already know, while an enemy ship at range 1 to 3 defends, before attack dice are rolled, you may spend one charge and choose a friendly ship at range 0 to 1 of the defender. If you do, the defense dice cannot be modified during this attack, and the chosen friendly ship gains one strain token. So, notice that the charge down here has that symbol next to it saying that it will recharge one, uh, one charge per round. So, in which case, that is something that recurs. So, there's your Moff Gideon card. And then we have the ISB Jingoist. Now, what I'm going to tell you is that, yes, the Pride of Mandalore uh, box or reinforcement pack is a little bit... Um, not outdated, but just, you know, hey, guess what? Uh, we're just going through and unboxing things. In the event that you're thinking about getting this, we're telling you the reasons that you should. Now, a uh, real cool thing about the Jingoists is that before you engage, you may choose an enemy ship in your primary arc at range 0 to 1. If you do, then that ship gains a deplete or strain token of your choice, as in you, the pilot's choice, not the defender. So... Uh, unless it chooses to remove one green token. So the pilot, or I'm sorry, the person that is defending has the choice to remove a green token, or you give them a deplete or strain token of your choice. So those are pretty nasty. I've uh, gone up against those before, and what do you know? They're not always fun to fly against when you're thinking, hey, I got all this cool stuff and green token, and nope, you have a choice between a deplete and a strain. So we're going to go ahead and place this over here so that we can focus on the cards here for a little bit. Now we get into the really cool 
Rebel, yep, you heard me, Rebel Things. All right, so we have the Clan Wren Volunteers. While you perform an attack at range one, spend the, or if the speed of your friendly, ah, let's try that all over again. Sorry about that, guys. While you perform at, or while you perform an attack at range one, in the speed, or if the speed of your revealed maneuver matches that of the, of a friendly ship at range one, you may re-roll one attack die. And of course, they still have the Concordia face-off because, well, they're Fang fighters. So, and you'll notice that they are limited to two. Now, some of the thing, or one thing I'm gonna go ahead and talk about real quick is, yeah, we are going over this, but I'm going to make certain that people that are a little bit more new to this understand some of the mechanics of the, uh, different cards that we have here so you are limited to putting into your list two of these just by the dots there on the uh card itself so in which case now we move on to dirk who is also a limited ship so you can have two of the clan wrens you can only have one of dirk and dirk's uh, ability is going to be after you fully execute a red maneuver or perform a red action you may acquire a lock on an enemy ship in your bullseye or i'm sorry not in your bullseye in your primary at range one that's pretty cool so you know imagine if you will you take that uh two talon roll and you end up range one of an enemy and you can get a lock on it that sounds like a pretty cool idea so then we get into Bodica. Bodica, I don't know. Somebody's going to correct me, I'm sure, but I'm going to say Bodica. So um, after another friendly ship defends, if you are not depleted, you may perform a bonus primary attack against the attacker. If you do, after performing that attack, gain one deplete. So essentially, you're getting what some of us refer to as a double tap. You get a chance to go ahead and shoot, then you... Uh, will deplete yourself to uh, get, or I'm sorry, you will take a bonus attack, then you have to take the deplete. So, I mean, if you got the opportunity to use it, go ahead and do it. All right, so now we get to take a look at Rebel Fen, which is not the same as Scum Fen. So, uh, before a friendly ship at range one to two engages, if there is an enemy ship in its primary arc at range one, that friendly ship may remove one non-lock red token. So in other words, you're removing a stress or a strain or a deplete. So like for instance, um, if you have these two together here, so Finn and uh, Bodica, so Bodica is getting that one deplete there. So um, there's a possibility you can go ahead and remove that maybe not on the same turn, but if you keep these two together, that's a possibility. All right, so now, in which case, that's all of the rebel ships that we have for the things. Now we're going into the scum. Uh, by the way, I don't have this, actually, hold on a second, I may actually have this out. So in which case, here is your uh, rebel but now, let me go ahead and grab this real quick. Sorry for that. I'm going to pull this out. We actually have uh, something coming up that actually has Scum Fen. So with Scum Fen, um, when you defend or perform an attack, if the attack is a range one, you may uh, roll one additional die. So this is where I look at you and say, hey, he's a team player and he's tr going to be able to remove stress, depletes, uh, strain, whatever the case may be. But in Scum, he is definitely not a team player. He is more of a uh, hard-hitting ace, and you definitely want to stay away from his range one because he is incredibly dangerous at that one. All right, so now back on track. Speaking of Scum, we have the Mandalorian Royal Guard, which, again, limited to two. So while a friendly... Sh non-small ship defense so in other words medium base or large base if you are in the attack arc you may gain one deplete and one strain token if you do the defender may change one result to a um uh, evade result so granted you're getting a deplete and you're getting a strain but you are also helping the big ship that is about to eat some serious damage is my guess okay so there is that, I believe. Now, we're going to go ahead and get into what we refer to as the quick build cards. 
So they are recommending that out of this pack, or maybe out of your own stuff, so Clan Ren Volunteer, you can load them up with uh, Predator. And then um, up here with Ven Rao, they say you can do Clan Training, Afterburners, and Ion Torpedoes. Now, here's the thing. This is what they just throw on a card. I don't, I mean, I'll look at these, honestly, just to see what it is that they say. But the problem with looking at these is um, you need to double check in Launch Bay or in Yasby to see if, or possibly even uh, infinite arenas, that um, you have to see if these builds are even um, still something that can be loaded out. They may not be the correct number anymore. So in which case, we're gonna go ahead and put these off to the side. I'm not gonna really give them much attention because I, like, for anyone watching, yes, these are helpful to maybe new players, but honestly, kind of read them, Take them with a grain of salt and then put them to the side and see if you can come up with something better. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put those on over there. So we have the false friend um, mark here. We have the tail of the dark saber. So we're going to get to those conditions here in a little bit when we actually get to those cards. Oh, wait, here's the first one. So Sabine. All right, Sabine Wren, and this is um, for a rebel standard ship and has a command uh, token here, which makes me wonder if this is really supposed to be for a um, epic or if it's just supposed to be for a huge ship. We'll look into that. So before placing forces, the trail of the dark saber condition or assign that to yourself. And so essentially what this says is while you perform an attack at range zero to two, you may spend a crit result. If you do the defending ships player has more scored, oh, this is definitely something, okay. So this is more for a condition or a different um, a different format of play. So now, in which case, um, while you perform a coordinate action, you may coordinate up to one additional friendly ship. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that off to the side. This is with the rebels here. So sometimes you get, um, Epic cards and uh, various scenario pieces that don't always go according to the normal games. All right, we'll talk about False Friend here in just a little bit. Little bit. Um, okay, so we got a cl clan training. So it appears that you're going to get three clan training cards out of this whole entire thing. So now, before you engage, if you are not focused, which is dangerous for a uh, Mandalorian Fang, I'm just telling you. Okay, so... If you are not focused and there is an enemy ship in your primary arc at range one, you may spend this charge to perform a red focus action. So you'll be stressed, but at least you'll have focus. After you perform an attack, if the defender is destroyed, recover this charge. So it can be reoccurring so or recurring, but um, you just got to make certain that you fit those particular conditions. All right, so this is a Mandalorian card, which means that it can be any faction as long as it is a Mandalorian pilot. So you're good for scum, you are good for rebel. So in which case, there you go, putting that off to the side. And now we go to Dead Eye Shot. Some of these are uh, normal ones, as in like they've been out before. Uh, basically, Dead Eye Shot, while you perform a primary attack, if they're in the bullseye, you may spend a hit result or a or change a crit to a hit result if you do the defender de exposes one of its damage cards. Now, what's not specified here is if it is random or if it is chosen. So I'm going to go with it should be random, but if a judge says otherwise, listen to the judge. Okay, so in which case, I'm going to do this so that we can kind of keep, get a tally of what all we got here. So there is two, hold on, there we go. All right, so we got three clan training, two dead eye shot, and now we're going on to two ion limit or ion limiter overrides. After you fully execute a red maneuver, uh, you may perform a barrel roll action. Um, if you do, roll an attack die on a hit, gain one strain token, and on a crit, gain an ion token. So this is mostly for your TIE fighters. Um, so what I will tell you is that, hey, guess what? That could work for, I believe, 
not only um, Empire, but also First Order. And there are TIE fighters in the Rebels with Sabine's TIE, if you can find one. So there are two of those. All right, then we get into Marg Sable Closure. And uh, this is if you want to be really, really close to some asteroids. So after you fully execute a maneuver, if you moved through an obstacle structure or a huge ship, or if you uh, deployed, you may choose one enemy ship in your primary arc at range one to two, and that ship gains a strain token. So sounds pretty cool, but it's, it's a question of risk and reward on that one. I don't use that very often myself, but that doesn't mean anything. So if you want to try it out, go right ahead. Okay, so now we got some force uh, tokens or force uh, abilities here. This is a light side. So before another friendly ship at range 0 to 2 would be dealt a face-up pilot or crew damage card, you may spend one force. If you do, that damage card is discarded instead, and you are dealt one face-down damage card. Then if you have two or more damage cards, recover two force. So that's pretty cool. So now we go ahead and move on to Malice, which dark side. All right. While you perform an attack, you may spend one force, so you can change a hit or focus to a crit result. If you do, after you perform that attack, if the defender was dealt one or more face-up pilot or crew damage cards, you then recover two force. So essentially, it's the opposite of the other. So um, I'm going to tell you I've seen this used very often, not so much on the compassion side, but, you know, we also have different people that fly different things. All right, let's see if I can go ahead and make some more room over here so that we can see some of the other cool things that we're going to see here. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we have, oh, the Electro Chaff, yes. I'm going to hold off on this um, because I'm hoping to actually show you a little bit what it looks like instead. All right, so we have a Republic or a Scum crew card here and Ahsoka. So you are going to be gaining a focus, or I'm sorry, a force token on whichever ship you put this on. After you fully execute a maneuver, it, you may spend one force to choose one friendly ship in your uh, rear arc at range one to two. If you do, that ship may perform a red action even while stressed. So handing out some focus out there. Okay, so that is going to be Ahsoka. And then we get into Bo-Katan here. So Bo-Katan can be Republic or Separatist with this uh, card right here. So now, uh, she actually has two different cards. So make certain you're paying attention to the little section down here saying what it is that they can do. All right, while you perform an attack, if you are at range zero to one of the defender, you may re-roll one attack die. So that's if it's Republic or uh, separatist. However, if you are using her in rebel or scum, after you perform an attack, if the defender was destroyed, each friendly ship at range zero to two may remove one red or orange token. So that's pretty cool. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about Captain Hark. Captain Hark is going to be Imperial only, two charges. After you fully execute a red maneuver, if you are not focused, you may spend one charge to gain a focus. So that's going to be pretty cool as a crew member. I'm going to go ahead and put him up here because we, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we keep on running out of room with all the stuff here. So I'm going to go ahead and put him up there since he is purely Imperial. So then we got Rebel or Scum for Fen Rao here. Uh, before a friendly ship at range 0 to 2 engage, it, if its revealed maneuver is speed 1 or higher, and there is an enemy ship in its primary arc at range 1, that friendly ship may remove one non-lock red token. So that's pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to put him right over here. So then we get another Imperial. So that's going to be Gar Saxon. Uh, while well, a friendly uh, unit at range 1, 2, 3, an initiative of 4 or lower performs an attack against a defender you have locked, the attacker may change one focus result to a hit result. So that's pretty cool. So we got some stuff here with the Empire going on. 
And then let's go ahead and talk about, oh, we have a Republic. So Corky Crees. So after a friendly ship in your uh, front arc at range one to two becomes the defender, you may transfer one green token to it. Also, while a friendly ship in your uh, front arc at range one to two defense, if you obstruct the attack, the defender rolls one additional defense die. So essentially he's giving you a tactical scrambler for free here. So we're gonna go ahead and put that down here. Then we have another Republic. So strictly Republic, Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> Hello there. Always have to do it. So after a friendly ship at range zero to two, a focus or evade token, you may spend one force. If you do, that ship gains one focus token. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put that there. And as you can see, we're running out of room still. All right, so scum or separatist, we got Previsla. So after you perform a coordinate action, you can choose a friendly a crew remote instead of another friendly ship. Instead of performing an action, that remote relocates forwards using a hard turn left or right and a two template forward. So in other words, he's talking, or this is a coordination that you can actually do for the um, um, Super Mandalorian Commandos, which uh, you see in um, the gauntlet packet. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start stacking on top of people here. So now we get into Prime Minister Almec. So now, Almec, equip this side first and set up. After a, a friendly ship at range zero to two reveals a white maneuver, if it has no green tokens, it may gain one stress token to gain one calculate token during the end phase. If you have two or more stress tokens, you have to flip this card, which now means you are Maul's puppet. And after a friendly ship um, at range zero to two fully executes a red maneuver, that ship may perform a calculate or uh, focus action on its action bar, even while stressed. So way to go for being Maul's puppet. Now, uh, let's go ahead and talk about Rook here. Rook has a nasty ability or a nasty ability. After you perform a red action, you may gain a strain token. While you perform an attack, if you are strained, you may change one of your blank or focus results to a uh, hit result. Now, I um, know that uh, one particular player that has a lot of fun coming up with a lot of, um, how shall I say, nasty lists, went ahead and put this on uh, with a... Uh, Houndstooth, so I want to say it was Dr. Afra, and it's a nasty combination. So I don't know if I talked about it previously on the, sh uh, the channel, but it is nasty. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get a lot of different uh, crew cards mauling in there. So we got also the gunner cards coming in soon. So rather than um, continue reading through all of this, which is pretty long video so far, uh, I do want to talk about Tell Merrick real quick because this is the other condition for False Friend. So uh, set up before playing uh, Platon Forces, choose one enemy ship and assign the False uh, Condition to it. So now, uh, the action, if the False Condition is not assigned to an enemy ship, assign it to an enemy ship in your um, uh, primary arc at range zero to two. So now, during the system phase, if an enemy with this upgrade or upgrade is range zero to two, an enemy remote at range zero to two, or, or I'm sorry, or an enemy remote, flip your dial face up. Action game one deplete token and one stress token to discard this condition altogether. So essentially, this is a way of um, finding out what your opponent is about to do before you actually get a chance to fly. So basically almost a little bit like informant. Okay, so we still have some pretty cool cards here to go through. I mean, Maul, one of the things I'm going to say is having a force and a purple uh, or a force coordinate is pretty cool. I'm also going to tell you um, adding an illicit is sometimes useful, especially if you want to throw in something as, say, like, I don't know, Dead Man Switch or like say contraband cybernetics, that would be pretty helpful. However, going to be a scum only, so make certain that 
you pay attention to the lower white portion here. So we got one person that's going to be in a rebel or in a squad, including Gar Saxon. So he can go ahead and operate with the Empire, and that's Tristan Wren. Uh, while a friendly unit at range 0 to 3 performs a missile attack, which all of the commandos do, you may spend a charge if you do the attacker may change a hit to a crit result. So watch out for that, dude. He's nasty. Okay, then we also have uh, Ursa Ren. You may maintain up to two locks. Each lock must be on a different object. After a friendly ship at range 0 to 3 is locked, you may acquire a lock on an enemy ship. So that's pretty cool as well. So you need to kind of check out how much is their price. Uh, we forgot to talk about Savage o uh, Opress here. Um, after a friendly ship in your primary arc gains 1 to 2, uh, stress restrain token uh, you may spend a force charge and if you do that ship gains a focus token instead so that's pretty cool so that's scum and separatist and uh, we got the last um, how shall I say crew card at the start of engagement this is for Satine at the start of engagement um, you may spend two charges if you do each friendly ship at or each friendly ship may choose to gain one Deplete and one focus token to gain one disarm token and one evade token. Okay, so um, there you go. I'm going to go ahead and put that down. Now, we're okay. I'm not going to go over the specifics of this one. I'm going to say this is only a scum or I'm sorry, a scum, large or huge. And it's Gar Saxon again doing, you know, Gar Saxon things. Suppressive Gunner was actually pretty cool for a while because you could use it with the Republic. But anything that had a gunner. So you, while you perform an attack, you may spend one uh, focus result. If you do, the defender gains a deplete token unless it chooses to suffer a damage. So it was either reduce your um, gunner or re reduce your opponent's gun by one, or they automatically uh, took a damage. So that was pretty cool. All right. Now, in which case, um, we have some specific people that I'm going to say, please check out on say the Phantom Wiki, which we have the video description for. So I'm sorry that we're kind of rushing through this, but this is gonna be a pretty long video as you can see. Weapon Systems Officer is pretty uh, fun. It's fun for if you are playing it, it's not fun if they're using it against you because after you perform a special attack with a target lock requirement, you may acquire a lock on the defender. So if you had to spend it, you automatically get it back. So there you go. So you can keep on hitting them with one or more uh, missiles at that point in time or whatever. Uh, so missiles, proton, or I'm sorry, uh, torpedoes, whatever the case may be, you know, pick your poison. All right. So then we get into false transponder codes and this is a charge. Now, after you acquire a lock on an object or an object acquires a lock on you, you, if you have a active charge, lose that charge and jam the, or that object ignoring range restrictions. So essentially, if somebody locks onto you, you jam them, lock broken, so sorry for your loss. All right, now, um, Blazer Bomb, you get one of those. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Concussion Bomb, oh, those are nasty. So uh, let's see here, Thermal Detonators can be nasty. And then Delayed Fuses, which I'm sorry, a delayed fuse on a concussion bomb is fun. So, um, in which case, once you put the bomb out there, you go ahead and place a fuse marker on it. Now, if you're not familiar with concussion bombs, it basically states that you must spend one charge to drop a concussion bomb if able. Otherwise, spend one charge to drop a uh, concussion bomb. So, here it is. You start dropping, you can't stop. So you can't stop till everything is dropped. But if you put on a delayed fuse, like let's say that you already know that you're going to be bumping up into somebody and you're not going to be able to get out the uh, range of your bomb. You can go ahead and put a delayed fuse on that and it's going to keep it from blowing up, but it blows up the next round. And plus that means you have a second concussion bomb out there. And regardless of what the circumstances, there are ways around this. But I want to say you that you're dropping a bomb at least uh, for the next couple of rounds. So now, 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and put those down over here. We got the thermals. We got the blazer. We'll talk about the blazer here in a minute with the electro chaff. And then we have overtuned modulators. Okay. This is both good and bad at the same time. So, for instance, let's say you have a one defense um, ship. I'm going to go ahead and just throw out this thing where it can and cannot work for you. So let's go ahead and say that you think that you're one defense ship or you see a ship that's going to have multiple attacks on it. Go ahead and pick up, spend this charge, pick up uh, three calculate tokens. Then after this charge is in, or if this charge is inactive for every each green token you remove, you gain a strain token. So let's go ahead and say you pop this during system phase Everybody's still going to be shooting at you, and instead of spending a focus, you're spending a calculate to flip one eye to an evade or whatever the case may be. Um, but I've also seen it where somebody sees this popped and then they don't shoot this target at all. Therefore, the target ends up with, say, three strain tokens. So in which case, be careful when you are using this thing because it can come to get you later. All right, now... Ladies and gentlemen, um, one of the main things I'm going to tell you that you need this for if you are flying things or any Mandalorian, all right, these, these are three reasons for you right here. So, Beskar Reinforced Plating, okay, this is really awesome. While you defend, if the attacker is in your primary arc before you would be dealt a face-up damage card or a crit, I should say, you may spend one charge to be dealt that face down or spend two charges to discard it instead. Now, what you may want to talk with the judge about is when do you get to see the face up? Because I think it is supposed to be as soon as you know it's coming up as face up, you go ahead and have to um, spend it before you see what the card is. If I'm wrong, just tell me in the comments. But you get three of these in this, ladies and gentlemen. And having three things with three different plating or you can even put this on the um uh razor crest if you wanted to so this is pretty cool so in addition to that here's what i'm going to tell you i love this feature but the only problem that i have with it is i always forget that during system phase you have to do it during systems so um now in which case you spend one charge to acquire a lock on any object in your primary arc. Now, I'm also going to say that for new players, you may be thinking, hey, guess what? If it's in the um, primary arc and it's beyond range three, can I do it? The answer is no. So while you are or while you perform a primary attack, if you have a lock on the defender, ignore obstacles beyond range zero obstructing the attack. So in other words, no range bonus. So that's cool. All right. So in which case, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and put that down. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you that I ended up buying this particular pack twice just for these things. Because if you're flying um, a whole group of things, you definitely need these. All right. So now... One of the things that I'm certain that everybody's looking forward to is the cardboard stuff. So let's go ahead and get the cardboard stuff up and running for you. Now, we're going to go ahead and get this over here. I'm going to pull out the little thing here so that I can open this up. Again, thank you to Order 66 and Bright Forge for letting us open this up. And here we go. Uh-oh. There we go. So we got all sorts of cool stuff here. We have new um, debris fields, new asteroids, the markers for the conditions we were talking about, calculate tokens. I mean, you know, it's the generic stuff here. So, but generic is sometimes needed. So there you go. Now, uh, more debris clouds, thermal detonators, fang fighter, then we have all of the uh, pilot cardboard, which I'm going to tell you is the same on both sides in this one, except, hold on a second, yeah. So for Clan Ren Volunteer and for the Mandalorian, there are two different factions, so you may want to figure out how are you going to store that because they are two different factions. All right, otherwise, the ISBs are the same, Fenral is the same, same thing with uh, Dirk and 
Bodica, yep, they're all the same on the different sides. Okay, cool. So now we get into the electro chaff. So what I'm going to tell you about the electro chaff is that it is a system phase. You have to have both a missile and a bomb slot. By the way, the rest of this is just simply the Fang Fighter dials. Um, in which case, I'm going to go ahead and put that over to the side here, and then we'll talk about the blazer bomb pretty soon. So, now, in which case, uh, during the system phase, you may spend one charge from this card to launch an electro shaft, and it's a one-time deal. So, when it launches, ladies and gentlemen, it is going to uh, go either three bank to the left or right, or it is going to go to uh, four forward. And you can use this as an offensive tool, or you could use this as a defensive tool. In other words, if you know that people are coming in and they're going to hit you hard, you are going to go ahead and throw that in front of you. They have to come through it. And uh, by the way, this cannot be recovered. So this is a pretty spacey, as in like takes up a lot of space, pretty close to the same amount of space that you need for, say, uh, the cluster mines. So now... Uh, the effect of the um, chaff is that the ship breaks all locks and all locks aren't it, on it. So, and then it is assigned a jam token. So even when you break all your locks and get through it, you can't take a focus or anything because you're jammed and you can't reacquire locks. Uh, roll one attack die on a hit or crit. The results, or I'm sorry, on the a hitter uh, crit results, the ship assigned is, or I'm sorry, assigned a stress token, and at range zero, ships cannot acquire locks and cannot be locked. So now, with the rules of obstacles as they are right now, I would talk to a judge and find out if you're still able to shoot off of this thing, because I assume that you can, uh, but with the rules being that if you were on an obstacle, that's the problem. So I would see from a judge if this is a obstacle or object at that point in time, because if it's an obstacle, you may not be able to shoot off of the thing. And if it's a object, then well, there you go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about the blazer bomb. And I'm actually going to go ahead and get this. Okay, the blazer bomb is a two part or two round bomb. So at the end or at the end of the activation, the device will detonate. Uh, when this device detonates, each ship and remote at range zero to one rolls an attack die. Each ship suffers a hit for either a hit or crit result on the die. After the device detonates, as in you put a blaze aligning with the uh, bombs guides here, as you can see in this particular image. Now, a blaze is an obstacle, so therefore, oh, we can take a look here and see if it says obstacle. Yep, it's an obstacle. So I assume that once this thing goes down, if you're still on it, you can't shoot. But check with the judge. All right, so place, or I'm sorry, the blaze is an obstacle. After this obstacle is placed, place a fuser mar uh, fuse marker on it. So Let's make certain that I didn't just skip. Where is the fuse marker? Uh-oh. Oh, there, there. All right. So fuse markers looking like this right here. So once it goes down, you go ahead and place a fuse marker on it. And during the end phase, remove the blaze with no fuse markers. Then remove one fuse marker from each blaze. Now, I do recall that... If you flow through this or fly through this thing, that there is a problem. So when you roll through a blaze, you roll an attack die or fly through a blaze, you roll an attack die, hit or crit, the, the um, ship suffers a hit damage. On a focus result, it gains a stress token. Then the ship skips its perform action step this round. So that is the problem with the blaze itself. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, this is everything that you get in the Pride of Mandalore. Uh, let's see here. I'm just checking to see if there's anything else. Do, 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 do. And it doesn't appear that 
I have missed anything that I'm like, oh, you need to know this. Ooh, you need to check out this. Uh, thermal detonators, if you haven't already used them, it's a bomb that you can essentially like launch two of them at the same time. So that's pretty cool. Especially if you have somebody like um, the fire spray pilot on the scum side, Eamon, and he's able to throw bombs out um, at three hards or three back. So imagine two thermal detonators going out in both directions, even though I don't think, uh, I think somebody ruled that you can't do that anymore, but imagine, and it's a lot of fun. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to uh, check out the Rebel Scum Con, June 27th through the 30th. Uh, tickets are on sale now. We will put the uh, website down, so uh, check that out in the uh, description of the video. Uh, thank you once again to Order 66 and uh, Bright Forge so that we could get this out for you to take a look at. This has my uh, thumbs up on it. I mean, I bought it twice when it first uh, came out just for the uh, Beskar uh, reinforcements and plus some of these other things going on, especially with the different Rebels. Uh, I will also confess that there were a couple of uh, the cards that like the clan training obviously need some more if you have a group of say like five things going somewhere. So there are lots and lots of reasons to go ahead and grab this if you were ever on the shelf about getting it. So which case, thank you so very much for watching. And as always, Batmando out.